Hey guys, welcome back. 2020, Happy New Year to everyone. So actually, we've got lots of efforts before in order to create a GCC program. Right now, I'm going to start in 2020, I'm going to start new topics dedicated to inequalities because new year, new topics. And here, I just want to prolong that into linear programming. So that's very sort of uh, interesting application mass. So probably you'll need this in a computer science or during solving different optimization problems when you need to find the maximum minimum to for the objective functions. But right now I'm going to start with the basics. So make sure you understand how to solve linear inequality with one variable, with repeating variable and also quadratic one but here i would just want to show you the reminder how to cope with one uh, with the linear inequality and with quadratic inequalities uh, when you have one variable okay so that's why i'll just simply show you the general way how that will help you in the fo for the following topics and this is the very starting video all right so let's get started Inequality, basically, when you have some expression compared with zero on the right side or with another expression. So that's why generally you need to come to the way that you have, let's say, an expression and you compare it with zero. So in this way, expression is less than zero, might be less or equal to zero, it might be more. So we can consider also an example when expression is more than zero more or equal so this side actually will influence whether you are going to include boundaries or not if you have like uh, if you're new to that topic so make sure you have the reference to my previous video for GCC program uh, that describes equations and inequalities and how to solve them so make sure you got it but right now I'm going to show you the way, the graphical way, how to visualize the result and how to determine by examining the graph. Okay, so let's, uh, we can say that generally this expression, so I use highlighter in order to highlight that's your expression. And simply what I'm going to say that we can set up this expression to be a function fx. So no matter which sort of expression you have, linear one, quadratic, or even polynomial expression, so power more than two, you can say this is the function. You simply compare it with zero. So technically, what it means, no matter with how your function looks like, right? So on Cartesian plane, you can say that if this is Cartesian plane, and that's, let's say, red one is your function, so that's your f from x, you can say the following things, that basically if you compare the first type of inequality, so simply you're doing uh, your fx is less or equal to zero, so you're simply trying to see visually where is your graph is below x-axis, so here is just graph should be below x axis okay uh, below or on x axis because we have non strict inequality so zero it might take also zero no problem so zero value here no problem for that but it, we are interested in the case where your function is lower so or just simply below x axis so that's is going to be a solution. So basically, solution for inequality is set of set of x values, basically, so that where which satisfy that inequality where your function is less or equal than zero. In this case, in the second case, we're actually wondering about where your function f x more equal than zero. Okay, so typically, um, here simply this part of the graph so I use I use dashed line or dashed curve in order to indicate 
that where your expression of function more equal than zero. So that point is also can be included because inequality non strict In case of strict inequality, like strictly more than zero, or let's say strictly less than zero, you are not supposed to include that point. So, but the question is how to define set of axes. So, and the answer here, it is simply, you see that any point on the curve, no matter where you take for your, uh, for your part of the curve that satisfy those words that it's below x axis, that's case one. So x coordinates of any points are there. So it means that if this value x is sort of critical value so that your fx equals to zero, that's the critical case when you explore zeros of the function. So any x more than x critical will be satisfied that fx is going to be less than zero. So fx is less than zero when your x values more, in this case, less or equal than zero, is more or equal than x critical. Okay? And for the second case, when you explore your function fx more or equal than zero, so simply it's above x-axis or on that, so it's any point on that part of the curve or of the graph should have such axis so that x is going to be x less than x critical. So we can state that fx more or equal than zero when your x values less or equal x critical. So that's why x critical is very significant point. It might be several points, like for parabolas, it might be two of them, for example. And hence, the, the main idea is to find the critical points that the step in order to start solving. So you find the critical points when, or x value when x fx equals to zero. So you found zeros of the function. So make sure you found zeros. So the steps find zeros of fx. So basically when fx equals to zero, so you found critical values. And then you're trying to, by sketching the graph, if it's possible, so by sketching the graph, sketch fx so that visually understand where you graph more or above. So basically, sorry, not more, but above x axis or below, depending on sort of inequality you're trying to solve this one or this one, okay, or below x axis. So that's the typical steps that you need to follow. And from where you actually figure out, find the intervals, intervals, basically x set satisfying conditions to, so satisfying conditions to, so where the graph of fx above, completely above x-axis or above or on x-axis depending on strict or non-strict inequality or below in the case of this sort of inequality. Okay, so hope you got it. And but it's better to demonstrate how it works on the examples, right? So that's why we just want to do the following. So that's the main steps. And I just a little squeeze it. And using that, let's try to figure out how it works when we have one, let's say, straight line or basically linear inequality. So first of all, let's examine how it works with linear inequality. So let's set up inequality in, in the way of, let's say, first example. So linear inequality. Let's say we've got 2x minus 
one more or equal than zero. So obviously you can say why to solve that graphically if we can solve just using simple idea transfer like numbers to the right side. This is just a presentation because you'll be needed that when you'll be solving inequalities with two variables to understand that principle. I understand that it's pretty easy to figure out solution immediately. So like 2x is more equal than 1 from where by divided by 2 x more equal than 1 over 2. That's actually the solution. But here I'm going to show you how it works graphically so that you understand how to apply it for parabolas, for more complicated problems. So we set up that part as the function fx. And now in this case it's linear function. Let's drop it on Cartesian plane how, how it looks like. So it looks like so let's say that's Cartesian plane and we're going to drop your function on Cartesian or x, y set. So we've got 2x minus 1 so we know minus 1 that's the point is basically so let's remember mx plus c that's general equation fx equals 2 so m is simply the gradient c is y-intercept so we've got y-intercept it's here and let's say the gradient is 2 so mean for one step by x in or in x direction you've got to rise for y okay so two points up so that's going to be the next point. So that how you can simply can get your line. So use dash line. So set up here. This is your line. Okay. In case of we comparing with zero, we understand that we somewhere here, we've got zero of the function, right? So in this point, we've got x critical critical value when your fx is simply zero so that's zero function and that's the first one actually we sketch it we switch the steps however it doesn't matter for our case so find zeros of the function now we're going to find basically x intercept so x intercept from there is where your fx is zero so we just equate zero and solve instead of inequality we just equate that function to zero and say okay 2x minus 1 equals to zero okay so from where we can figure out that critical value or basically x intercept is 1 over 2 so we can set up that to be okay i zoom back so um that's critical value is one over t where your line cross the x-axis okay so now we're going to compare with zero so in our case we should decide are we interested in above x-axis or below because we have fx more equal than zero so obviously we're interested in above range so that's why now i'm gonna use another type of the line let's put the red color for that so red one and from where i can highlight the part that we're interested in so that's exactly where your fx more or equal to zero including that critical value so obviously any x values that correspond to the points of the red part of the graph basically x any x more or equal than 1 over 2 which is the critical value satisfy our range so that's graphically that graphically we can observe that so what's the application for let's say parabolas it's very interesting to show on parabolas how it works okay so let's consider parabolas uh just simply move to another page so make sure you understand that and let's take another parabola 
with the equation. So in case of quadratic quadratic inequality. And let's set up some sort of inequality. Let's take 5 minus x squared minus 2x. So I intentionally writing not in standard form. And let's say more than 0. So we explore that case. So that's simply quadratic expression. So fx is quadratic function or quadratic expression on the left hand side because you remember the general way how to set up quadratic function is to set up in general form x squared plus bx plus c equals f from x so that's the way okay so but first we need to rearrange in proper manner so i'm talking about negative x squared then minus 2x and plus 5 so that's our quadratic expression so and we compare it with zero so obviously your fx we're interested in x values so that your function should be completely above x-axis so above x-axis all right so in this case we need to first find zeros so that's why we are trying to solve fx equals zero we're trying to solve quadratic equation and let's set up that plus five just simply equal to zero from where we can find x values okay so let's try to do if you use quadratic formula you can figure out that x critical values or basically x intercept is minus b according to the formula quadratic formula square root of discriminant which is b squared minus 4ac and over 2a so that's why we can figure out that x1 and 2 so let's combine them so it's 2 plus minus square root of b squared is 4 right and minus 4 times 5 times minus 1 Okay, AC will give you plus 20, okay? Just make sure you understand what's, what's happening with signs, why it becomes positive. N over negative 2A. Sorry, not negative 2A, but negative 2, according to the formula. All right, so we've got values. Let's try to calculate them using calculator. So X1 is simply... Let's take with a positive sign, it's around 145. So nx2 is simply negative 345. Okay, that's approximate values to 2 dps. So, okay, we found all critical values. We can sketch the graph. So now let's try to sketch. Sketch the graph. So I'm just zoom out okay we've got solution here now I'm gonna choose x axis x y z okay that'd be red and uh, right now what I'm gonna do I'm just going to set up x intercepts right here so so the first value is 145 so 145, so approximately here, that's x1 equals 145. And also we need to set up negative 3.5 approximately, so somewhere here, okay? So that's x2, negative 345. Okay, so we've got a parabola. Let me see, where is the parabola? Let's use the green one. So that's parabola and okay, we don't care about the vertex. So that's why we understand that because the leading coefficient is negative one. So the branches goes down. So actually we can figure out as a half of distance to each x-intercept. So the vertex point, but we don't care about this. 
So we just catch that. So that's parabola. That's a parabola with the equation negative x squared minus 2x and plus 5. Okay, so we are interested in the question where is in the question where parabola more than zero. Okay, so where is more than zero? I just prolong the x direction right there. Mm, yeah. Okay, that's x direction. So where is our parabola? is above x-axis because according to what we have and what we figure out so your fx should be completely above x-axis so i used the black part and use the dashed line so obviously it's here right that's where your function is more strictly more than zero so those points are not included in this case because we need to stay, we don't need to include due to strict inequality. So that's inequality is strict. Okay, so that means where is the x set? So we've sketched that and now we need to determine. So x set of values so that where your function fx is strictly more than zero. So as you notice, you can just take any point on the graph and see okay so any x within the range from x2 to x1 will satisfy because if you take any like those points on branches that you are wanted to have so you'll get axis actually beyond this range and you don't need those points, right? You don't need those points. You're only interested in the points that lays on that dashed part of the of the curve. So actually, you see that all x coordinates of those points are within the range from x2 to x1. So that's why solutions here, so solutions for solutions for quadratic inequality inequality that we had before is simply x set from negative 3.45 basically from x2 to strictly less than x1 which is 145 so that's solution and graphically you see that so technically you understand how it works you can apply another different methods like the intervals methods so but this topic uh, is really focused uh, later on later stages on inequalities with several variables in that case and actually problem solving when you need to resolve some optimization problems and hence you need to be able to grab that so it's very very necessary hope you like that guys don't forget to subscribe, put the likes on that video and on their following videos dedicated to basically inequality topic for GCC, which I'm going to extend a little bit more to the linear programming. So, hope you like that. You're Daniel Dallas. See you later.